Hello and welcome to 2024 Carolina Panthers team preview. Can Bryce Young be, you know, an average quarterback? Just maybe not the one of the worst in the league. Jonathan Brooks, RB1 season, but what is that ACL going to be? Xavier Leggett, Deontay Johnson. We got some weapons now. A lot of good things to talk about here for the reigning worst team in the NFL. So all that and very much more coming up in the next 30 minutes. Lock in. Let's get after it. I'm your host, Ian Hardis. Welcome to the Fantasy Life Show. And joining me, as always, is Fantasy Life Director of Analytics, all-around baller, Dwayne The Rock McFarlane. And Dwayne, one of my best friends, the Panthers fan, hasn't been smiling as much over these last, you know, couple years after having one hell of a run with Cam Newton and company, you know, in the mid-2010s. But we got Dave Canales in town. We got Bryce Young some weapons. They've improved the offensive line. Are you buying Bryce Young taking a sort of, you know, year two leap that we saw guys like Trevor Lawrence and Jared Goff make after, you know, also just atrocious rookie year campaigns. Yeah, I think you you could hope for something like that. Like I would hope it's a bigger leap than Trevor Lawrence, who honestly still has never really lived up to the full fantasy potential. I know yeah. that people will talk about the EPA and all those things, and Trevor Lawrence is great, but for fantasy purposes, I still want more from Trevor Lawrence. So I would say that's a fine bar you know, for Bryce Young. I, when I look at him, the biggest thing for me is what did we expect? <laughs> the offensive line was absolutely terrible. The best wide receiver on the team was 87 years old, and he was actually good at the beginning of the year, and Adam Thielen. But what was he? A slot guy working underneath, and he's the only thing Bryce Young had to work with. Now, Jonathan Mingo, late in the season, picked up some target share, but I think we all agreed last year that Jonathan Mingo was a reach. We took him some in best ball. We took him some in our fantasy drafts because we're like, well, who are they going to throw it to? Jonathan Mingo's the guy that matches what we saw from Bryce Young in Alabama, a guy that can buy time. He can elude defenders in the pocket. He can escape on the scramble drill and hit the big plays down the field. Well, the problem is Bryce Young didn't have any of those things. Yeah. And he's constantly backpedaling just to get away from pressure. I think that Nate Tice actually did a great breakdown of Bryce Young's film oh, yeah. over at Yahoo and talked about here are all the problems he saw and the things that he's going to have to do better. And a lot of it was to do with the pressure he was facing and how he had to deal with it. So I think getting the upgrade with the two guards that they spent a lot of money on hopefully gets rid of some of that quick pressure up the middle, Ian, and that would be a help. And then the other thing is adding Deontay Johnson through a trade. This is a guy that, for whatever people may think about him, not living up to expectations in fantasy land, has been a guy that can get open, has been a guy that can keep the chains moving. And then you look at Xavier Leggett, another guy. Maybe we don't love him. Supermodel for fantasy life didn't necessarily go bonkers over Leggett, but he is a guy that in his fifth year was really good in the SEC. So he's a, at a minimum, they tried to add another weapon. And then you got Jonathan Brooks that they look to add the backfield. So I think big time upgrade across the board. You get a better offensive line. You get better playmakers around you. Now Adam Thielen potentially is your wide receiver two at best. At worst, enough of good things happen, and he's like your wide receiver three or your fourth target in your in your offense or the fourth guy you're actually trying to, to create touches for. So I think all of those things bode well for Bryce Young. Now, does that mean I want to target him in drafts? No. I think Superflex is really the best place you guys would think about him as being a potential QB2 if you get sniped off at the other things. There is a path to Bryce Young getting better. He also, if you're playing in a one-quarterback league, most likely would be, oh, my God, the guy just went bonkers in week one. You want to grab him off the, off the waiver wire. I will say, man, like when we were doing our Falcons preview and kind of breaking down what went wrong for Kyle Pitts and just how every single factor got fixed to some extent this offseason, you can almost see that with Bryce Young as well. I mean, the play caller, like not good. Shout out Stephen Patton, had some cool play caller rankings. Last year, Thomas Brown, 31st. Now we have, you know, arguably the quarterback whisperer in the NFL after fixing Geno Smith and Baker Mayfield in back-to-back -back seasons. Dave Canales hopefully improving that in a major way. I mean, 28th in pre-snap shift in motion, 30th in play action, even Easy fixes here to potentially make life easier for Bryce Young. There's also the wide receiver room. Only the Patriots' top three wide receivers had a lower average open score in the Panthers last season. what they do to your point? Got missed of separation himself, Deontay Johnson. And even if you aren't that high in Xavier Leggett, I mean, God only makes so many humans that are 220 You can run a sub 4 four forty. Pretty sure he's at least going to be demanding some attention from opposing secondaries. And yeah, the offensive line, man. 
didn't have to go make these sexy, you know, free agency moves at skill position. Instead, they use over $150 million to, again, fortify the interior with a pair of strong guards. So, hey, Bryce Young, not necessarily the same sort of, you know, pocket passer as someone like Derek Carter. We have to say, like, all right, unless he throws 40 touchdowns, you know, we're not going to have any fantasy upside. He gave us 15 rushing yards per game last year, which doesn't sound like a ton, but that's solid enough to wrap your mind around more of an upside scenario in fantasy land. So, league high, 55% of his scrambles actually resulted in first downs. The dude can scoot a little bit. I wish he was a little bit bigger. You know, Bryce Young on the record saying, I can't grow. But, Dwayne, I believe earlier in the offseason, now, this is best ball. I'm with you. We are not advising leaving drafts. With, you don't even need to draft Bryce Young in redraft. Again, if he balls out in week one, we'll get in the waiver wire with it. Outside of super flex leagues, that's a deep flyer. You know, that's fine. But I believe you said, man, your most drafted quarterback in best ball, in large part because he's just being written off and he's more or less free at the end of drafts. Yeah. And, and a lot of times I'm taking Deontay Johnson, who I think mm-hmm. is underpriced. We'll talk about him more in a minute. Um, there are a lot of guys on this offense that I think, you know, when you look at their price, everybody's just assuming the Panthers are going to be an absolute cesspool and completely stink again. And I think that's the biggest thing here. That's, that's the miss. This offense is a very different offense than what we saw last year. Now, do things always go perfectly when you make all these big free agency moves? No, they don't. But we at least have to give the team credit for spending draft capital and making moves via trades, free agency to do as much as they can for Bryce Young, especially when they traded away all the picks and they couldn't just do it through the top end right, of the NFL draft. So I think the Panthers did everything they could with the resources they had available. I think that that is a big positive. And Bryce Young, you mentioned it. You know, When he came out of college, he was actually classified as a dual-threat quarterback. He was one of these guys that people looked at as being a really good uh, rushing quarterback and a good passer, which was actually better than some of the other guys in the class that we now look at that he came out with uh, that actually turned into being guys right. that can scramble more. So Bryce Young does have that ability, and a lot of times in Alabama, when he had the chance to scramble like that and he could have taken off and ran, well, what's the reason he didn't? Because he had freaking amazing receivers, and he'd see them, and he'd do the better thing. He'd get the ball deep down the field for a big play. So I think all things said, way better offense could be one of the top waiver wire priorities. If you play in a really deep league and you let's say you had to take Matthew Stafford as your QB one, not the worst thing ever. But in that kind of scenario, I might tag a guy like Bryce, Bryce Young on at the end of my draft and want to have two quarterbacks. I'm with you, man. And again, not trying to rewrite what happened last year. He was bottom two by almost any meaningful advanced metric out there, like atrocious rookie season. But again, I think they fixed a lot of the things and we'll see if they can get going. It sucks they had to waste that rookie year. You know, we've seen it with Justin Fields, plenty of other quarterbacks where it's just a complete waste of a year where you almost learn nothing new about the guy and just hope they weren't overly broken from everything that went down. Hopefully 2024, bigger and better things for Bryce Young. But Dwayne, again, we mentioned a big reason why is the hope that new top dog Deontay Johnson can emerge as again the wide receiver one that he's been for certain portions of his career but honestly like Deontay it's one of these things where he's just like the only wide receiver that the fantasy community wants to hold drops against like I've never heard one person this whole offseason bring up how Puka Nakua had four more drops than any other player in the NFL last year why because it doesn't freaking matter targets and drops accordingly tend to go hand in hand and even looking at drop rate which yes is a better metric to use if you are trying to criticize someone hands look at the top drop rates over the last you know three years and guys like jamar chase tyreek hill debo samuel amongst many others all have dropped the ball more often than deontay johnson so Again, Mr. Separation and one of the newfound you know, statistics in our community that we are relying on a bit more to help quantify this is ESPN's open score. Since 2019, man, he's been second, third, fourth, first, and most recently 11th. And I know you've done some good research, Dwayne, showing that this does tend to correlate to some fantasy goodness. Yeah, it's the most sticky stat of all of those over, over, year over year from all the ESPN uh, route or, or receiver tracking metrics. There's a lot of really great stuff, but the one that works year over year that does show to have some signal is that open score. And I'll tell you what, when you turn on the film, you just go watch Deontay Johnson. You see the open score. Like oh, yeah. this dude gets open on the outside. He can do it against press coverage. He can do it at all levels of the field. Hasn't necessarily had all the deep shots, but a lot of that I think comes back to the quarterbacks that he's been playing with. Ben Roethlisberger, his arm was cooked by the time yeah. that you know Deontay Johnson got in there. And then we had Kenny Pickett just really trying to figure things out not always necessarily understanding how to buy that little bit of extra time that it may take to uncork the deep ball. So I think there's a lot of opportunity here. If Bryce Young does take that step forward, which is a big question here for Deontay Johnson, man, I think it could be, I don't want to say magical, but where you're getting Deontay Johnson 
it could be magical. You you could still be getting a wide receiver two for your fantasy team, and you're getting to draft Deontay Johnson as a wide receiver four or wide receiver five right now. The target earning ability is right there. It's borderline wide receiver one, as Ian would say, borderline erotic. Okay, this guy can do all the things he needs to do. Is he the best after the catch? No, he's okay after the catch. He can still make big plays. He's not the he's not a complete receiver, but he does the thing that you need the most, and that is the ability to go out there and beat coverage early and often. And his quarterbacks have shown it by trusting him. They're they're going to throw the guy the ball because they know that he's going to get open. And if everything went perfectly, he could still be a wide receiver one. Yeah. That he has the tool set to be a wide receiver one that you draft as a wide receiver four. I honestly think worst case scenario, you're drafting a wide receiver four right now that's going to be a wide receiver three in fantasy. But I think that it's very reasonable that he ends up as a wide receiver two. Yeah. And I mean, let's not pretend like Deontay has just been playing in one loaded Steelers offense after another over the years. He never really got to play with Big Ben before the elbow surgery that really sapped all of his arm strength and Trubisky, Rudolph Pickett. And guess what? Still tend to put up what we're talking about, Dwayne. Volume induced wide receiver three numbers with, you know, spikes to actual wide receiver two, wide receiver one upside when the touchdowns have come. So I know, guys, he let the fumble roll around by his feet. Okay, that happened. And he's also, okay, run backwards a few times. Steelers fans are always so quick to remind you of that. But, you know, I prefer not to hold one play that really has nothing to do with fantasy anyway, completely against the guy when we are talking fantasy football. So at the end of the day, one of the cheapest wide receivers that we can, again, project for legit to have the potential at least to get 150 targets. He gave us 14.9 and 17.3 fantasy points per game in 2020 and 2021. Like this guy's already shown he can do this stuff. Like, and the underlying data has not changed. What's changed the most around Deontay Johnson, the environment around him over the last two years, which is why it's so important to work through all of these different factors and get all the context straight. I think when you put it all back together, Deontay Johnson looks really good. The, The key is, is Bryce Young good? And so we don't need to go into that again, but if Bryce Young ends up being good, Deontay Johnson is going to be an absolute steal. Hey, Dave Canales offenses. I mean, Mike Evans, wide receiver 10 last year. Chris Godwin, not great, but still wide receiver 35. And then the year before that, man, in Seattle, we actually saw both DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett emerge as top 25 wide receivers as well. So again, just playing in terms of who's getting the most targets and is price cheap. Deontay Johnson is checking those boxes with flying colors. To the running back room, Dwayne, we have a new RB1. Jonathan Brooks, your RB1 in the rookie fantasy supermodel, but might not be ready for a full workload in week one. How high do you think his ceiling is, though, when he's 100% right? Because I know some of those comps you were throwing around there looking pretty, pretty, pretty good. Yeah, man. Like By the end of the year, I think this guy could help you win your league. Is it, what's he going to do for the first four, six, seven weeks? I think there could be a ramp-up time. Think back to Brees Hall last season and what it took. It was the first six games before he worked his way into a full-time workload. Now, this was a late-season injury uh, last November for Jonathan Brooks, so I would extend that timeline versus what you saw from Brees Hall, who had gotten an an injury earlier in the season before. So I'm thinking by week 11 or 12, so that's something you got to keep in mind depending on how you've built your team. Do you want Jonathan Brooks to be your second running back off the board? You know, I think it I think there's a path to that, but you need to remember that you're going to have to wrap back around and find another running back that you want to use early in the year. Maybe that's Devin Singletary. There's ways, guys. Just what you don't want to do is box yourself into, I can't take this player at this spot because he's not going to play the first eight games. What you have to remember is, okay, well, great. Is there an option after him that I could pick up that's probably going to be getting most of the work for his team through the first eight games? And then by the time Jonathan Brooks is ready to rock, I'm inserting him into my fantasy lineup. And he's the guy that's going to take me the rest of the way. And the reason you want to make bets on Jonathan Brooks and what he can be at the end of the year is because in the rookie supermodel, looking at this profile, 71% of these running backs went on to be a top 24 finisher in their first two seasons. Half of them were running back ones in their first two seasons. So the the, the entry portal to that is probably somewhere around, around week eight, nine, or 10 this year for Jonathan Brooks for the Panthers. The biggest knock I've heard on Brooks is also, it's the Panthers. They suck. Guys, we just talked about all the changes they've made. If you're thinking about the Panthers the same way you were last year, you just need to go read the transaction log. Just go read that first and then come back and talk to us about if you think this Panthers team is still the exact same as they were last year. The, the truth is they're way different. They're a way different team. Will all these things work? Again, we don't know. But Jonathan Brooks, man, could be a running back one as soon as the end of this season. If not, I still think you have a really good chance to get a solid running back, too. 
the running back competition is not stiff at all, in my opinion, in this running back room right now with Chuba Hubbard and Miles Sanders. I think Jonathan Brooks, once he's ready to rock, Ian, they're going to give him. They're going to give him the rock. And again, looking at Dave Canales' running back uses, Rashad White was one of the league's most inefficient rushers, and he was still an RB1 in fantasy land because he barely ever left the field. Even in 2022, man, like I've actually forgot how often Kenneth Walker was leaned on as a feature back. Like even without as much, you know, proven receiving ability as I think we have with Brooks, he was regularly posting snap rates north of 75%, which is so elite, especially in the year 2024, where we don't usually get those sort of workhorse running backs anymore. So looking at our handy dance. And the ADP tool, Dwayne. We are seeing Brooks going off the board at pick 75, right alongside running backs like David Montgomery, DeAndre Swift, and Zamir White. I do think Montgomery is one of the more underpriced running backs in fantasy, but if you just want to talk like who has the best pure by week 14, all these guys are healthy and doing their thing, who has the highest one-week upside, it might very well be Brooks. Yeah, and I think the key you said there is all of them are healthy and their teammates are healthy. Yeah. Brooks has the path to just take over his backfield. Montgomery's not taking over his backfield. He's got Jameer Gibbs. Now, if Jameer Gibbs went down, we've already seen what that looks like. David Montgomery's going to give you running back one number. So, But all things considered, everyone healthy, I agree. I think Brooks is the guy. Chuba Hubbard certainly wasn't bad and, you know, I would say relief, but he actually just took Miles Sanders' job straight up uh, last year. But I don't mind that combo. Yeah, Chuba Hubbard's cheap in drafts. If I take Jonathan Brooks and I get boxed into a certain kind of build, I know it's not as sexy anymore to take running back handcuffs because, you know, you're, you just want to bet like you're right. Well, in a situation like this, betting that you're right means you're betting that you're right like, like by week eight, nine, or ten. You, you yeah. know that being right in the first eight weeks is probably Jonathan Brooks isn't going to play a lot. So I am willing to dabble with just taking Chuba Hubbard, especially in a redraft type league. And I'll just start him at first. I'll just use him for the first five or six weeks and see what happens. You know, obviously, if that turns into a committee between him and Miles Sanders, we'll just have to recalibrate. Shout out Chuba. League high, 277 touches without losing a fumble or dropping a pass last year. Now, don't get it twisted. This still was one of the league's worst, you know, backfields. Only the Giants actually averaged fewer yards per opportunity than Panthers running backs last season. But yeah, man, pick 168 for a guy that you could actually feasibly slot into your flex during the first month or so and then offer, I don't think, RB1 upside if, you know, Brooks ends up going down again or, you know, as we like to say, wins the lottery, takes a little bit of time off. I don't think we're getting an RB1 here, but could we get something like last year when he ripped off eight straight weeks between RB6 and RB28? I do think that is possible. But again, guys, we're using plenty of tools to try to come up with these decisions. And you can also use them with our new Fantasy Life Plus premium package. And for more on that, here's a message from the one, the only, Mr. Matthew Berry. You know, when I started Fantasy Life, I had one mission in mind, really just one. Fantasy football and sports betting for all. And what started out as just a newsletter has now grown into a full-fledged media company. And here I am to tell you we're ready to evolve yet again. I'm introducing Fantasy Life Plus. It's a premium product built upon a suite of fantasy and sports betting tools to take your game to the next level. I, I know, I hear you really, Barry, a premium product. Okay, I understand, but get this. Our mission has not changed, right? Our newsletter will forever remain free. All of our expert analysis, free. And we will still provide sets of fantasy football rankings for free. Everything you need to be a great fantasy football manager, you will still be able to do for free at fantasylife.com. But hey, if you really want to level up, then Fantasy Life Plus is for you. Fantasy Life Plus will introduce new tools like our draft champion, customizable rankings, site-wide league sync integration, player prop models, game models, DFS pick'em builders, and so, so, so much more. Seriously, just check it out. Go to fantasylife.com to learn more. And as always, may your trades never be vetoed, may your flex plays always work out, and may your Monday Night Miracles always come through. Great stuff, Matthew. All right, Dwayne, we've already kind of mentioned some of the coaching changes, so you know, feel free to be brief if we've already covered most of what you want. But yeah, man, Dave Canales is here. His offensive coordinator, Brad Idzik, was with him both stops along the way in Seattle and Tampa Bay. So certainly expecting the Canales experience. What do you expect to get from that? Because again, the offensive line, the skill position talent, I'm not saying this is a top five group, but at a minimum relative to last year, much better position for Bryce Young ahead of year two. Yeah, I think they're going to try to run the ball. Uh, I think they're going to try to run the ball plenty. Uh, I think they're going to try to use that to be a way to keep some of the pressure off of Bryce Young, specifically early in the season. So I think that's something you got to consider. But I think you mentioned the biggest thing there. Is Canales really this QB whisperer? 
what's funny about that, we hear this term all the time, and then suddenly one of these QB whispers gets stuck with a really bad quarterback, and guess what? They can't whisper shit <laughs> because the quarterback actually has to be good. But Bryce Young was the number one pick overall, so I want to bet on the fact that Canales, what he has done, is he's taking guys that were taken early in the draft and maybe, you know, at one point people thought they were talented. They ended up not having the best careers or maybe didn't live up to the expectations we thought, and he's been able to turn them around. So I think that is another positive for Bryce Young because Bryce Young's the key. That's 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 what makes all this go. If Bryce Young does take a step forward, all these things we've talked about become that much better or they can actually realize their upside. So I think that that is a positive thing. As far as it's it goes, it's just tough, man, because like he's been – an assistant wide receivers coach, a quality coach. Like he's he's only been an offensive coordinator this year. So we don't really know. And he's with an offensive mind with Canales, who's probably gonna have his imprint. So I think you got to lean more into what Canales has done historically here. And I think the best thing that we can say about him is hopefully he is a QB whisperer and that Bryce Young takes that big step forward. I'm so with you, dumb man, though. It really is the Jims and Joes over the X's nose. Like, all right, if we switch Bobby Slowick and Thomas Brown last season. Do we really think that we're just getting opposite results from CJ Stroud and Bryce Young? Probably not. You know, maybe I'm wrong, Dwayne, but I would say probably not. But I think there are certain coordinators that are absolutely giving cheat codes, and we've talked about what they are. Motion, play action. Those two things. If you're not doing those things as a coordinator, it doesn't matter how good your quarterback is. Like, just do them. They're going to help him more. So I think there is something to that, but... I agree. It does come down more to the fact that you had freaking CJ Stroud and two two receivers that ended up being really good. Funny how that works out. And funny how my bets usually work out. But guess what? We keep going back to the well and trying. And always at DraftKings Sportsbook. We have partnered with DraftKings Sportsbook, guys. And right now, all new customers who bet just $5 will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. All you got to do is, again, download the DraftKings app and sign up using our promo code FANCYLIFE. That's right. New customers who bet just $5 on anything and receive $150 in bonus bets instantly. You can stay in on the action. Use your $150 in bonus bets on DraftKings same game parlays for a shot and even bigger payout combine multiple bets together from the same game and watch the odds skyrocket sports betting is not yet available in your state don't worry DraftKings is the one-stop shop for all things daily fantasy we can join in on all the fun and have a shot to win cash prizes download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now new customers use our promo code fantasy life and bet just five dollars on any wager and get 150 dollars in bonus bets instantly that's promo code fantasy life only at DraftKings Sportsbook the crown is yours as it makes sense, you know, a team coming off a 2-15 two, two and 15 campaign doesn't exactly have the highest win total, resting at just 5.5 to a minus 115 lean on the over. So while I don't think six wins is this, you know, ridiculous goal for the Panthers to reach, I'm still going to take under, man. And it's not even so much with the offense. I think the offense could go from being – Again, maybe the single worst group in the league to something closer to average. But, man, you start looking at a team that had to deplete their draft capital chest to go trade up for Bryce Young in the first place. And this defense now all of a sudden looks like one of the worst groups in the league, especially after doing really nothing to get all that much better after losing Brian Burns. So I'm going to take under on five and a half. You know, I'll use the caveat that this is not one of the you know bets I feel the strongest with because it is such a low number. But to me, Dwayne, this once again looks like one of the league's worst overall rosters. This line opened at four and a half um, and it's moved to five and a half, which I think, uh, you know, four and a half would have been an easy yes. Yeah. On the over. Five and a half gets tougher, but I'm still going to take the over because I I think this is one of the more improved offenses. You know, we get the new, we get the new head coach, we get the two new guards, you bring in two new wide receivers for a young quarterback that was the first pick overall in the draft the year before. So I would want to take the over. Um, I haven't studied all the odds on winning the division, but plus 1100. To win the division and a division where every team has questions. Every team has questions. I don't think any of them are given. If I have to choose, I'm going to take the Falcons, but they have questions. You know, you, you mentioned it whenever we covered the Falcons, <laughs> you pointed out Kirk Cousins, the injury risk, like it's not a guarantee. Yeah. You know, the Saints have plenty of questions. The Bucs, they have plenty of questions. Is Baker Mayfield really that good? Hey, like average, below average quarterback. So I think the door's open. I, I like the 11, the plus 1100 here. And again, I have not studied what the odds should be on a bet like this for a team this bad. So go, go look at that before you make a bet. But like, if I am picking a long shot to win a division, I think the NFC South is the kind of division where I would want to make that bet. And I think the Panthers are the right kind of team where I think they've made enough big improvements that it could happen. 
You heard it out of Dwayne's mouth, everyone. Panthers are winning the NFC Put the South. mortgage on it. <laughs> no if, ands, or buts about it. No, it's a fair point. It really is, you know, a down division. And yeah, who knows what's going to go down here. So a couple more items, everyone. First of all, there is a position battle going on at the tight end position. We do have Tommy Trumbull and Ian Thomas, the incumbent contributors, but fourth round pick Jatavian Sanders, who was considered by many to be the number two most fancy relevant tight end of the draft class, is also in town after being selected in the fourth round pick 101 overall so you know Dwayne I just kind of have a hard time getting behind any of these guys our boy Tommy Tremble Tommy Tremble over the years you know Tommy Trembles spring camp MVP with Chuba Hubbard reminds me of Auden Tate you know winning the training camp MVP a few years ago so maybe you can talk yourself into that Tommy Trembles does have more career touchdowns than Kyle Pitts that is a very sad fact to say out loud he also has one career game with more than 35 uh, total receiving yards so I guess my hold up Dwayne even if we can just just work our way to the point where Trumbull or Sanders or Thomas somehow get the full on featured role, which I don't think is a guarantee. Yes, Canales did that with Kate Otten, but it was a heavy rotation in Seattle. Like, even when Otten was there, man, like we talked about in the Buccaneers preview, how he was just regularly being, you know, schemed the football well behind the team's wide receivers, which the Panthers now have. So it's going to be probably like we project them to still be a low scoring offense. It's far from a guarantee that any of these guys are going to, again, be getting a featured role. I'm probably already talking too much. You're not drafting these guys. If we see a big change in preseason or week one utilization, We'll address it then. Yep. Jatavian Sanders is the name like that you're you're watching for. Um, he was a guy that many thought could end up being a round two guy, he fell to round four in the NFL draft. Uh, was a well thought of prospect coming out of Denton, Denton, Texas, ended up going to UT. Didn't quite live up to the height that he had as a prospect, but anytime you've kind of got these things matching up that, you know, okay, th- there were some thoughts pre-draft, he would be a round two guy. Yeah, he does fall. He was a really highly lauded prospect. Now, suddenly he's in a room where there's not a lot of competition. To your point, you're not drafting them in your typical league. He's a guy you just want to keep uh, You want to keep on, on a list. You know, that if you see something go down in week one and he gets that 75% route participation, scores some points, like there's a path where he ends up being the second best target in this offense because we have questions around the guys outside of Deontay Johnson. We also have questions. Time to wake up, Ian. No, I know. I have my alarm going off, but we're good, guys. We are good because Xavier Leggett is our potential sleeper here. And is Leggett. I looked it up. Two oh, E's. Is? Lee Get. Appreciate Lee you. Lee Get. Appreciate you, Xavier. Xavier. Lee Get. Lee Get. All right, I think we got it. Adam Thielen last year obviously had a nice start, 75-plus receiving yards in four of his first six games. Just one of his last 11, though, fell off hard. So, Dwayne, I'm with you. Deontay Johnson, wide receiver one. But if we do see, you know, some good things going for this passing game in general, I mean, last year we we saw the target distribution in Tampa Bay. Different offenses, quarterbacks, wide receivers, I get it. But, again, it was Mike Evans at 136 and Chris Godwin at 130. As good as Deontay Johnson is, man, wouldn't be the most shocking thing in the world to see the freaking first-round wide receiver drafted have a pretty damn big role from day one. And as much as there are concerns I know you'll get into about, you know, the lack of production during the first, you know, portion of his collegiate career, I mean, when I see Dane Brugler out there saying that the film does give off DK Metcalf vibes, and that's on top of, again, one of the freakier athletes just in the entire draft class i'm intrigued when he's as cheap as he is right now yeah i mean when you look at at, at liget like it's just nothing for four years <laughs> and then an absolute bonkers year in year five in the sec so i mean the thing you can say is that it was against really good competition when he finally came alive doesn't score well in the wide receiver uh rookie supermodel over at fantasylife.com which you guys can check out but Yes, there's an opportunity here. Jonathan Mingo didn't do a lot last year. Now, Jonathan Mingo started earning more and more targets down the stretch last year. Didn't do a lot from a yards per route run perspective. But, you know, again, it was just a terrible offense altogether. So you don't know how how to really, you know, put all that back together and say, is that really on one player or the other? It was just a bad team last year. So I would say that, yeah, Lee Gett would be the guy that I want to draft right after Deontay Johnson. I'm going to go ahead and take him over Adam Thielen because Adam Thielen, going into that age 34 year, in i mean it's just he was really good at the beginning of last year but like he's at that spot where like an absolute cliff where you just never hear from him again can happen like at any moment and so with that i'd rather bet on the young guy with upside it could end up being wrong but i don't think adam thielen if by not taking him now that we have deontay johnson on board is going to be something that i'm looking at going oh my god i didn't draft adam thielen i'm losing my fantasy league i will say this if i draft a ton of young guys 
on my squad and I'm looking for somebody that might be able to get me through the first four or five weeks while I figure out who to start between Romo Dunze and Xavier Worthy and guys like that. I don't mind plugging Adam Thielen in my week one lineup whenever I took some big upside swings earlier in my fantasy draft, but I wouldn't expect Adam Thielen to be carrying you by the time you're trying to win the major money for your fantasy championship. I would yell at you about that take, but I did last year and then it just, you know, completely worked out the exact way that you described it. So love when that happens. But Xavier Leggett, for me, Dwayne, my second most drafted wide receiver of the offseason over at Underdog Fantasy. A lot of that is, again, just the price point. He's kind of risen up the ranks, you know, slowly but surely along the way. But yeah, man, right now over at ESPN going neck and neck with Adam Thielen, you know, alongside more complimentary wide receivers as well, like Romeo Dobbs, you know, Khalil Shakur, Demario Douglas. So again, it's just one of those things where even if he didn't have the highest, you know, pre-draft read on someone like Leggett. Sometimes we got to trust that these NFL teams know a bit more than us, and they drafted them in the first round, obviously, for a reason. So, takes us to the final segment of the Fantasy Life Show, and that is, if the Panthers were a TV or movie character, who would they be? And Dwayne, I'm going with Peggy from Mad Men. This is basically Bryce Young. We're getting a second chance on life after she had that, you know, ill-timed pregnancy that she just didn't even know she was pregnant, which apparently was a thing back in the day kind of wild to uh think about but yeah here's the point though when she was pregnant she's in the bed and they're taking away her baby don draper comes up and he just goes it will shock you how much it never happened and that's what we need bryce young to do it will shock you bryce how much 2023 never happened literally forget everything you learned move forward be the 101 be the prodigal quarterback that you have been your entire life from high school to alabama to being the panthers pick that they put their entire franchise on become a baller just like Peggy to you, Dwayne. <laughs> yeah. I want to let the record show my show sheet did say major league. I didn't know you were going to do major league two for one of the other teams. People have to go see which team that was <laughs> in this division, but I chose major league uh, because look, it's one of those teams. And I just, I just think to like, as the season's coming in and like, it, it cuts to the fans getting ready and they're like, who are these guys? You know? <laughs> and, uh, and, and like the, the scouts are all looking at it and says, this, this guy here says he's dead and we'll cross him off, like move to the next guy. But it's just a very that, different. <laughs> sorry, Dwayne. Is that, that's, that's supposed to be Adam Thielen. Cause you said we might never hear from yes, him again. <laughs> Adam Thielen will be this guy here's dead. Uh, Wesley Snipes, I guess would be league at like, we hope that we infuse this young speed into the team. Um, if I was going to Deontay Johnson, well, I guess, yep. Yeah, uh, Adam Thielen would be Tom Berenger, <laughs> you know, the old <laughs> catcher that calls his shot at the end. Actually, I would have to think about Deontay Johnson. You, you could probably come up with it quicker than me who Deontay Johnson should be, uh, wild uh thing. when we're making those. Yeah. I like that wild yeah. thing. Go, well, that's probably Bryce young, but I don't know. <laughs> I, I'll go, I'll go with major league though, mainly just because like everybody expects them to stink. And I think there is a chance that they actually end up being better than what people, uh, are probably predicting. Deontay just Serrano can't hit the curve, which would be like him dropping the ball. I yes, guess. everybody until, thinking that drops. Yeah, until he I, does I, it. I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, I think he just hit it. It would stops be dropping the ball, and all of a sudden Serrano can hit the curve ball, and you have a legit all star over there. So glad that's we finally. Bad. Glad we finally figured that one out. And glad that, you know, we got to, again, preach some Carolina Panthers goodness to all of you. So thank you, as always, for listening to the Fantasy Life Show. You can check out, again, written previews for these teams and much, much more. All of our tools, rankings, all that goodness over at FantasyLife.com. So as always, appreciate you tuning in. For Dwayne, for producer Matt, I'm Ian. Thanks for watching the Fantasy Life Show. And until next time, take care, everybody.